Thank you, June, and good morning, everyone. I love champagne. <laughs> I grew up with an uncle who used to drink it every day at the end of the day. It was his own little ritual to, to celebrate whatever happened that day. Um, and years later, when I lived in France, I uh, learned from my hosts in the Champagne region that every day there's something that's worth celebrating. And even during my pregnancies with my three kids, although I didn't drink much of anything, uh, if I was going to treat myself to something, it was going to be to a little glass of bubbly. But all of those years, I had a little problem. I was terrified of opening a bottle myself. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's true. And with good reason. There's typically between 70 and 90 pounds of pressure per square inch in a bottle of champagne. It looks innocent, but it's actually quite dangerous. That's about two to three times the amount of pressure in a standard car tire, and about the same amount as in a tire in a double-decker bus. So there I was, doomed to a life of loving champagne, but never being able to open a bottle myself. Now, as an independent-minded woman, this drove me completely bonkers. <laughs> I did not want to have to depend on people, other people, my whole life to enjoy the bubbly. Well, thankfully, a couple of years ago, I attended a retreat called the Mighty Summit, and my friend Helen Jane taught me how to saber a bottle of champagne. Now, sabrage, as it's formally called, is a ceremonial way of opening a bottle of champagne. It apparently dates back to the reign of Napoleon, where soldiers would open them, the bottles of champagne gallantly on horseback with their big military swords. Now, thankfully, you and I do not need a horse or even a sword to saber a bottle. What you do need <laughs> is a nice cold bottle of bubbly, uh, a big knife, it doesn't actually have to be a saber, and it doesn't even need to be sharp. In fact, today we're going to use this completely awesome, murderous dagger. <laughs> <laughs> That was borrowed from the props closet here at the theater, so thank you to the theater for lending me my, my best prop ever in, in sabering. And lastly, you need an event that requires a, a bit of theatrics, which is good because instead of pushing the cork out of the top the way most conventional people do, we are just going to shear the entire top of the bottle straight off. Now, some of you may be wondering, this doesn't make any sense. How could this potentially lethal way of opening a bottle cure me of my fear of opening it in the more conventional way? And the only response I have is, sometimes to face your fears, you just have to run straight at it, brandishing a knife. <laughs> so here are some photos of me sabering my first bottle. Now, I think you can see... <laughs> that my emotions go from utter astonishment and surprise to kind of amazement and happiness to this deep sense of satisfaction. <laughs> and that's in part because I think I realized at that moment that that bottle was a lot more scared of me than I was of it. <laughs> so, how does it work? Well, all that pressure in the bottle is created during Champagne's second fermentation process. And this is where you add cane sugar and yeast into each bottle, and it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide, which makes all the bubbles that we love, but also all that pressure that I'm so afraid of. And this is also why Champagne has those extra thick corks and really thick bottles. But there's a weakness in the bottle. It's where the two seams go along the sides of the bottle, and where those seams meet the glass lip, just under that wire basket, those are where the fault lines are, and that's the secret to sabering. So, how do you do it? Well, the bottle needs to be cold, and it needs to be of decent quality. Uh, cheap bottles tend to explode, which <laughs> creates a decidedly less festive mood, <laughs> and possibly also a trip to the emergency room. Um, so what you do is you remove the foil from the bottle, which I've actually already done, and then you carefully remove the wire basket. Next slide, please. Now next, you're going to find one of the two seams going up along the side of the bottle. Now you're going to hold the bottle firmly uh, in your hand and hold it at the base, and you're going to hold it a little bit upright, about 30 degrees from horizontal. Now you want to make sure nothing fragile is in your line of fire. <laughs> like a glass window, or your grandparents, or like a beautiful TED logo. You don't want to hit any of that. And then you're going to take your knife, and you're also going to want to have some glasses ready. So, June, if you wouldn't mind joining me on stage to catch the spoils of our adventure here. Oh, dear. 
<laughs> you're going to run the knife up the edge of the bottle. And here, let me take this wire basket off here, because that's not going to work very well. You're going to run the edge of the knife up the seam of the bottle right into that glass lip. All right, this is where I get nervous, because it could pop out before I get a chance to chop its head off. OK. <laughs> All right, so what you do is you find that seam, and then you run the knife right up the side of the bottle into the glass lip. All right. The firm pressure of the knife hitting that weak point is actually all it takes. You don't even have to push it that hard. And all the pressure in the bottle is just going to help shear the top straight off. So we ready? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I wish you could see the expression on the stage right cameraman's face right now. It's really quite, quite precious. Okay, we ready? Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> should we hold to this too? Should we show the should we show? Them? Oh yeah. Well, here I'll show you the. Uh, just in case you thought it was a trick. Um, if, we can, if we can get a close-up, this thing has actually been sheared straight off the top, and the, the cork and the, the top of the glass top of the bottle is actually lying on the floor over there. Um, this is my, my best and ugh, really only party trick. I, I joked that it was good that we had a red carpet in case things went awry and the stains would be not that noticeable. Um, <laughs> I wanted to demo this for you today so that you could take a moment to celebrate whatever it is that happened to you today, that new idea that you discovered, uh, a new friend that you made, um, something that delighted you or inspired you, and to also encourage you to face your fears and try something new, uh, run at your fear with brandishing a knife. There actually could be champagne on the other side. So thank you. <laughs> and cheers. <laughs>